Hello everyone, and welcome back to another R tutorial video. And in this video, I want to delve a little bit deeper into R Markdown. Specifically, I want to talk about how we utilize R inside of R Markdown and some of the useful tips and tricks that go along with, um, with that. So as always, to create an R Markdown, you go to File, New File, R Markdown, and we're going to accept the defaults for now. And you'll see that when you load a new R Markdown file, you'll see that you have a lot of lines of, of it's not all code, but you have a lot of lines in here. And most, actually all of them, you don't actually need. So we're going to actually delete everything in here, and we're going to start a new blank, completely blank R Markdown, to talk about the different components of R Markdown, what the different components do, how we can modify things to get what we want, and I want to start off that discussion by talking about the R portion of our R Markdown, by how do we incorporate the R code into our Markdown, and how do we execute our code from our Markdown. So in order to use R code in our Markdown, we have to create what's called a code block. And a code block is created by simply using three backticks. So backticks are the key above the tab key on a standard keyboard. It's the um, uppermost left key um, underneath the function keys. So we're going to do three back ticks and then we're going to do a set of curly brackets so that's the shift and then the brackets key which is next to the P button. So once you do this you'll see that RStudio has actually completed the second bracket for you and you'll see that it's shaded it in this sort of light gray as opposed to white. So what this is telling us is this is saying that our markdown now recognizes a code block. It doesn't know what kind of code block it is and it doesn't currently have an end to the code block, but we've started a code block. So the first thing that we want to do is inside of this code block, we want to specify what language we want the markdown to interpret. And because this is R, we're going to put a lowercase r in there, which tells R Markdown to treat everything inside of this code block as though it was the R programming language. So right now, if I hit enter, you'll see that I am extending the gray um, code block here indefinitely. I can hit enter as many times as I want. To end the code block, we actually end it with three additional back ticks. Again, that's the number above the, or the, the key above the tab key. One, two, three. So now you'll see if I hit enter again, I'm no longer inside of that code block. So we can delete some of those lines here. Now, when we're inside of this code block, our functions just like our functions everywhere else. Um, in fact, inside of a code block, we're doing essentially the same sort of thing that we would have done in an R script. So we can put multiple lines of R code in here and they will not function immediately, or sorry, not execute immediately. So we can do things like create variables, right? We've seen this before. Right? We can do stuff like create loops. And everything's going to work just as we expected it. So how do we actually execute this R code? And there's two ways we can do that. The first is we can do it just like we do with the R scripts, where we highlight some line of code and we hit Control Enter. And you'll see it pop up down here in the console. Var equals happy has been run. And you'll see that the um, environment over here has been updated with a new variable. That's one way. The other way that we can run a code block is to go over here and to click this run current chunk. If we click this, you will see a green line progress over here, and you'll see that we now have uh, the code has been executed. And if we maximize the console again, you'll see here that we have the code being run in the console, but you'll see that unlike before when we used the um, control enter method, you'll see that the output has actually also been included directly underneath the code block in the R markdown. 
And this is one of the things that makes our markdown so useful is because it not only includes the code, but it also includes anything that you would output to console directly in the same document. So if we go to knit it, which I will actually show you what that looks like here in just a second, you'll notice that it will include both the code and the output in a single document. So let's go ahead and quickly knit. I'll save this to the desktop really quickly. I'm going to overwrite our other sample here. All right, and you'll see that what we've done is we've included the code block up here, and then we've included the output down below it. So again, the usefulness of our markdown here is that we've included both the code and the output in a single document. So just while we're on the topic here, when you're working with our markdown before you knit it, it might be useful if you've done something like this. Maybe you don't want the output clogging up your, your pane here. There's two options. The first option is to click this little double um, chevron it says expand collapse. If you click this, it will collapse the output so that it's no longer taking up space. And you can do that to have it um, expanded. The other option here is you can actually click this little X button here and you will see that it actually disappears from the pane. Now, we haven't actually deleted any code. You'll see that all the variables and everything else are still over here. It's just that that output's no longer visible and you would have to rerun the code to get the output back in the R markdown. Now, th an important distinction here, if you knitted it, it would regenerate the output. So you haven't affected the final product, you've just affected what you're actually seeing in the pane. So that's the basics of how to create the code block with the three back ticks, brackets R brackets, three back ticks, and how we can actually run our code using the run current chunk or the control enter method. What I want to wrap this video up with is a couple of extra parameters that you might see or might want to use when using our markdown. And these parameters are going to go up here inside of the brackets. And there are really three that I want to talk about. And they have to do with when we go to knit, what actually shows up in that final product. Because as I mentioned earlier, right now, if we do nothing, we will see all of the code and we would see anything that would normally go to the console appearing as an output. But there's certain things we can tweak to change what shows up. And the first one is the eval function or the eval parameter. And you'll see that as I'm typing our markdown, just like everything else in our studio has that contextual pop-up saying, hey, did you mean this? And I can just hit the Enter key, and you'll see that it um, auto-completes that. So the eval parameter, and these are all, all of the parameters I'm going to talk about right now are Boolean, meaning true or false. What the eval parameter does is it controls whether or not we actually run the R code when we go to knit it. And so by default, the eval parameter is true. So if I double-click on true and I knit, you will see that nothing changes. We have the code block up here, and we have the output out here, down here. Now, if we change it to false, right, what this is saying is do not actually run this R code. Simply put it in the R markdown without ever having run it. And I'll show you what that looks like if we click knit you'll see that we have the R code up here just like before in the code block, but we no longer have the output because this code was never actually run. And you might be asking yourself, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you ever want eval to be false? And there's really two reasons. The first reason would be if you're writing up a document like a book or something, and you have some code in there and you don't actually want the output to be displayed, in say a textbook, right? You don't want that in there, you just want the code, right? Doing eval equals false will let you do that. The other reason that this is useful is because this code is never actually evaluated when you go to knit, you can actually include code that has errors in it. So if, for example, I were to switch this i to a j, right? If we turn this back to true, right? 
and we run this R code here, you'll see that we get error in print J, object J not found, and that makes perfect sense, right? We've called a J inside of this, and we have no J anywhere else. So it has no idea what J is, and it's like, I'm not going to do anything. And more importantly, not only does it crash here, but if we try to knit, you'll see that it crashes here as well. So we can't actually knit. But if we turn this eval equals false, and we click knit, you'll see that we don't have any problems, and we're able to knit with the error in the code. Now, I'm not suggesting that you use this to pass along um, bad code, but it can be useful if you're trying to have send somebody an error, right, and you want them to, be able to look through your code. You can send them code to look through that has an error in it, and it's a good way to do that. So again, eval equals true means, means the code's evaluated and the output's included. Eval equals false means the code is not run, so you can do whatever you want inside of the code block, and there will be no output outputs included. The other one I want to talk about is the echo. If I could spell echo. Again, by default, this one is true. And what echo does is echo says, when we knit this R markdown, do you want us to actually include this code? Now, that might not make a whole lot of sense, but let's just knit, let's switch this back to I, so we don't break it. If we put echo equals true, it looks exactly like what we've seen before. If we switch echo equal to false, though, and we knit the R markdown, you'll see that what we've done is we've actually removed that code block from the, the final product here. So echo equals false is a great way to hide your code but maintain your output. The final one that I want to talk about is called warning. So by default, warning is true. What I want to do is I want to actually include in here a line of code that would actually give a warning. So we're going to say x equals as numeric. So what this line of code is going to do is it's going to convert this 1, 2, and x into numeric. And it's going to store that as the variable x. Now you might imagine that as numeric can't do anything with this x here. And so what it's going to do is it's going to actually convert that to an na. And what will happen is r will actually warn us with a warning. So if we run this code you will see NAs introduced by coercion. And what this means here is that it didn't know what to do with this X, so it made it an NA. It didn't crash, the code still ran. You can see over here in the environment that we have an X variable, and that it has one, two, and NA in it, but it didn't crash. So this right here, this non-error warning, is called a warning, and it's saying, hey, R did something you may not have expected it to do. You should be aware of it. So if we leave warnings equals true, if we go to knit this, you will see that in addition to the code block up here and the code block here, it's actually included this warning in the R markdown or the knitted, the knitted product. And you may not want that, right? You assume maybe you assume the reader knows this is going to be an issue, or maybe you're doing this as part of a textbook and you don't want to clutter up your document with all these warnings. If you switch warning to false and then you knit, you'll see that you no longer have that warning there. So I know this video is kind of long. I just want to take a minute to recap what we've done. We've shown that in order to use a code block, you need to have the three back ticks followed by the curly brackets with an R in them. Inside of the R code block, you write R code just like you normally would. 
When you want to run our code, you can highlight and use control enter, or you can go over here and click the play or run current chunk button. And then we talked about the three sort of parameters that you're likely to come across in this, uh, in the brackets up here with eval telling you whether or not you actually want to run the code and include output. So if you set that equal to false, the code will never be run. So you can include um, errors in your code. Echo, which tells you whether or not you want to include the code block in the output. So if you set echo equal to false, the code block itself will not be included, but the output will. And then finally, this warning. Um, parameter, which controls whether or not you want any non-error messages to be included in the R markdown. And if you set that equal to false, warnings such as this NA introduced by coercion will not be included. I do want to mention though that there are other messages called error messages, and this would be where R actually crashes. Um, those would still be included. So hopefully this made sense. I know it was a lot. If you feel unsure about anything, I encourage you to pause the video, go back, watch the parts you're confused about. And as always, please reach out. Thank you.